Okay, we're back here at EMC World for Silicon Angle's exclusive coverage of EMC World. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the events, extract the signal from the noise. This is day three of three days of exclusive coverage. Uh, we're going to try to keep the energy up. I'm John Furrier of Silicon Angle. I'm joined with my co-host. I'm Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org. Guy Churchwood is here. He's the president of EMC's BRS division, the conglomeration of a number of assets that has really done extremely well in the market, according to IDC, has about two-thirds of the market space. Guy, welcome back to theCUBE. Uh, thank you very much, appreciate <laughs> it. I think you're, you're one of your first weeks on the job was uh, last year at VMworld, uh, and so, and then um, you were recently named uh, president of the division, so congratulations on that. You know, first hundred days in, what'd you learn, and how'd you apply it? Uh, I, I learned how to sleep less. <laughs> well, I certainly learned that, but yeah, I'm, I'm <laughs> just coming around to a year's anniversary. I'm four days off. Yeah. So it's been uh, it's been a whirlwind to say the least. But um, but yeah, I, I mean I I've, I'm probably now it's the first job I've had in in years that I'm bleeding the color of the organization within a period of months. Yeah. And and uh, the team's fantastic. What we do is uh, phenomenal for the customers. And as you said, we have about a three quarters market share in our space. And so, um, so we have two things. One is to basically upkeep what we have to do and execute going forward. The other one is basically to uh, continue to disrupt ourselves to make sure that we're not lethargic in executing again what, what customers really want moving forward. Guy, I got I to gotta, I gotta tell you something because one of the things that we, Dave and I do on theCUBE is we look for you know, the signal from the noise, that's kind of our tagline, but you know, we, we look at the numbers, look at the videos, and you know, Jeremy Burton's got the, the big splash, everything's big, transformation, very sexy messaging. Um, but BRS, backup and recovery, isn't like that top of line messaging, but consistently when we look at the data, your videos that we do with BRS and the backup and recovery are so popular because mm -hmm. there's, it's a huge market. There's a lot of people who care about backup and recovery, so we constantly love to have you on because we get great traffic and response and engagement. So I want you to talk about um, not the sexiness of backup and recovery, but the relevance today. I mean, it's one of those things that's like, people don't necessarily talk about all the time, but it's always talked about. Right, right. So, so what's cutting edge right now in backup and recovery? I mean, obviously, everyone has issues. You got transformation like virtualization, you got VIPE, all these new kind of things going on. What is the current bleeding edge of backup and recovery? And share with the folks out there that vision. So, so you're saying the backup's not sexy? <laughs> is, that, is that what you're telling me? <laughs> John coined the term storage is sexy. No, it is, no, it's relevant. It so actually could, is sexy, yeah. but it's one of those things where it's like, everyone is doing it and they have to know more. So we're seeing the numbers, we see the data, and it's yeah, just yeah. off the charts. And so it's demand, there's huge demand. So, so I mean, one of the, the things we were talking about on the keynote is that um, backup is now becoming, in some respects, the long pole in big data. So big data is the sexy thing, is what people really want to do, but if you actually look at the way in which people will innovate, they're, they're trying to create a, a data pool um, of uh, information. and. Uh, to enable them to do that, they have to grow the applications or the data pool exponentially, and to do that, they have to have a really efficient way of backing the systems up. Otherwise, the backup window, it's almost like Moore's law for backup, it actually starts to get trashed, and that's why things like deduplication and incrementals become really important, and synthetics become really important. And so, as much as it, it it's the, in essence, it's the infrastructure is the plumbing. You go buy a house, and the drapes look good, and the carpets look good, and the plasma screen looks really good. But the reality is, it's very, uh, it, it's very rare you go underneath the house or up into the eaves and have a look at the plumbing and the infrastructure. But if you don't have good infrastructure and good plumbing, it doesn't matter how pretty the drapes are. Yeah, I mean, and yeah, exactly, if things aren't working, the impact is pretty significant. I'm asking data loss, you got all kinds of issues. Yeah, no. and I'm, I'm not talking about, yeah, I'm not going with the analogy of that, a backup <laughs> in the toilet. <laughs> I'll leave that one plumbing at least. So, okay, but now you guys have been out talking about some of the issues that customers are having with backup. I mean, you've gone as far as to say, hey, backup is broken. You know, we can't scale our businesses with this current model. Why is backup broken, and what are you guys doing to fix it? Yeah, so uh, I think you've got Stephen on a little bit later, mm. and you'll be chatting to him, and, and, and so uh, he coined a phrase, in fact he stole the phrase off me about the accidental architecture. Yeah. It's kind of annoying, but you should ask him about that <laughs> later. Um, but in essence, what happens is, um, because, uh, because backup is, needs uh, uh, more attention, let's just say, uh, if, you, if you go back maybe four or five years ago in the way in which people were doing application development, and IT wasn't delivering the right value to the customers, their own internal customers, people started to go off in, in renegade or road models. So they're creating their own development platforms, their own paradigms, and in the, exactly the same way as with backup, is because we're not delivering from an IT perspective a, uh, an efficient way of executing against backup, 
then the application vendors themselves or internally in IT they're finding different ways of doing it. And what that means is that you end up with these silos or data silos where you have three or four or five or ten different ways of backing up the data and therefore it's then distributed, there's security issues with that, uh, you can't get the deduplication, it's not in a centralized pool, you know, so everything kind of goes wrong. So the reality is most organizations now have multiple ways of doing backups and because it's a long pole, so what we have to do is to get ahead of that, have a much more agile way of executing against it from a, a, a portfolio perspective. So what's your vision of you know, backup or data protection? How will it evolve and what's sort of the end state that you're trying to get customers to get to? Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you know, in reality right now we're moving from a backup and recovery to data protection and then to data management. So you, you go through all of the phases of that. And you also have to basically split from uh, specifically being around um, on-premise uh, to on-premise and off-premise and what we're seeing increasingly is our customers are now moving to a hybrid model. So they'll actually have some data that's actually at the customer site itself with things like data domain, the storage of last resort, um, but they'll say, well, if I've got applications I want to do things like um, uh, software as a service, then they'll have applications around in the cloud and they, they want to have a backup, uh, holistic backup program or compliance program or archiving program that enables them to look at both the on-premise and cloud services, so hybrid models are becoming increasingly important. And Mosey's back. Yeah, yeah. So um, that's obviously part of that cloud piece of the equation. Can you talk about that a little bit? Why is it back and where does it fit? Why is Mosey back? You flew back to us. <laughs> uh, so, so this <laughs> comes back. Let it free and if it comes home, <laughs> yeah, it's that's good. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's right, it's the, the, true the, love. The, the <laughs> well actually, you know, if you had Russ on, Ru Russ uh, works myself, Russ runs the uh, Mosey business. Actually, we've We've rolled in Source One into Mosey as well because we think archiving is going to ah, be really okay, important yeah. to, as a service. Um, but I think he would be elated. The team would be back into um, into the EMC fold. One of the things that you know previously, because it kind of went from EMC out into VMware and then it came back again. Uh, when I joined uh, BRS, I honestly thought that Mosey was part of the portfolio because it is you know such an intrinsic thing of moving forward and I'm pretty obsessed with cloud and you know service provision models and so I fought pretty hard to make sure that we actually pulled this thing back into the portfolio so for them they feel like they found their family it's come back and mm -hmm. it makes much sense much more sense for right. us um, we want to extend it, so I mean, in other words, if you, if you kind of think of, of, of the current Mosey business, they're definitely moving more into the uh, SME and up into the enterprise, um, but invariably, we'll have to move to BRS as a service. So you think about each of the products lines that we have, how do we evolve that moving forward? And what's fabulous is we have one IP assets and a customer base that we can work with, and the second thing is the mentality and the way in which people from Mosey think is very different from a traditional way in which the BRS uh, engineering team and executive thing because we're really about large scale enterprise infrastructure. Uh, they have a different uh, mindset and model, so it's nice to have that blend. You know, it's you know, key of management is don't hire people like yourself, otherwise you get your own opinion back. <laughs> so you have to make sure that you have that diversity, and it gives us great diversity. So my other question, uh, hope you can help us just squint through, is how does the BRS division fit into this whole theme of of, of, of software defined storage and how do you see that evolving? Uh, so specifically, so we're, we're kind of obsessed about that as well. Um, so we are moving to virtualized editions of the majority of our products. Most of our value is really in software. It's not so right. much in the hardware piece. You know, so in other words, even if you look at things like data domain, although it's an appliance, the reality is it gets applied with things like DIA, you know, the um, data vulnerability architecture, with the DDoS, the products, the, the levels of deduplication, um, DD Boost, and then right the way into Avamara Networker, uh, a huge amount of it is, um, is software uh, execution. And so, um, so when you look at the software-defined architecture, you know, all software, including things like Viper that was announced yesterday, Viper's a really good way and, and we believe it's super critical to the business, it's going to be disruptive, and I would see that as almost like a service bus, like a storage service bus, or a, a hypervisor that allows you to basically pull out behind that of generic. So we got two sides, one is we want to be the, um, the protection platform uh, behind the storage itself, and then the second thing is we look at it and go, well, you've, you've got that transport mechanism, but you still need to make sure you've got application sensitivity, and you've got a protection and a protection storage um, architecture. So we're working very closely with Viper and the teams to deliver this on, in their software-defined architecture. So a couple other things, Guy, you're like a walking quote book. Uh, you mentioned <laughs> accidental architecture, so yeah, we've uh, yeah. covered that. The other one uh, that you talked about is that backup's not a Swiss army knife, it's more like a harmonious survival kit. So yeah, I'm terrible what do you mean at stuff by that? like this. <laughs> uh, that's good, that's I, I, good. I, well, good so, uh, so 
uh, every organization you talk to thinks that you need to have a product that you switch on, it does everything. And there just isn't such a thing. You know, because in other words, if you look at enterprise, even if you look at SMB, SME, enterprise, cloud, service provision, you can't have a product that fits everything because it's not going to have the scale or it's not going to have the simplicity, so you actually need to make sure you segment it. So the challenge I have with things like a Swiss Army knife is, on the surface, it looks great. Right? So in other words, you've got everything all in one, but the reality is not one of those functions inside a Swiss Army knife is practical to the extreme. You know, and, I, and I used it in the keynote, and I said, you can't cut a steak with a Swiss Army knife. You know, and, and they have weird things that you buy as part of it, which you've no idea what the hell to do with it. Like the pointy bit with a little hole, which apparently is to repair a tent. So <laughs> it's, it's kind of pointless. So, so the, and, and then, you know, to, to, I think I mentioned it when we, we last talked, yeah. is, you know, I look around my house, I found four Swiss Army knives, and literally every single one of them had a logo of another company on it where I got given it as a gift. Freebie. So it's great to get as a gift, but the reality is it's not that practical. So the difference between that and Swiss Army knife is, uh, or in a, in a survival kit is I believe very strongly in um, a survival kit for backup and recovery services. Mm -hmm. So you have a proper knife or you know a proper sewing kit or a proper toolbox, a proper screwdriver, you know, coming from the same family. So that's the harmonious thing. So you want to get the management right on that. You want to get the user interface. You want to get the experience right onto it, but have a tool that's very specific for the job. You know, and then when you want a knife, you pull the knife out, you use it. When you put it down, then you've got a torch, you can pull out and use it. And then that way, you actually have the best of both breeds, right? Yeah, now the obvious follow-up to that is, okay, how do you make sure that all the tools get into the toolbox in their right place and are there at the right time, and your kids mm -hmm. didn't take them and hide them or use them or leave them behind? And so how do you bring all that stuff together? Yeah, and, 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 that's, and that's there within is the challenge that we have inside of our organization, because as you know, you said, I think at the start, you said we're a conglomerate of multiple acquisitions. And you know, that was really why um, EMC brought me in in the first place, is to have a look at that and say, okay, so we have these fabulous best of breed technologies, how do we then level them out and bring them forward? So we do have a project, uh, and I can't say the name, but it's around the harmonious thing. Um, and, and project Harmony. Yeah, yeah, cheers, <laughs> thanks for that. Um, and we've been working on it for probably the last couple of years, and, and it's a journey that will take another few years as well. So we're, we're iterating, so we have releases coming out shortly around Network and Avamar, and you'll see further releases on that, you know, or further uh, iterations onto it. But you basically need to make sure you have a management framework that works, a GUI framework that works. You need things like uh, common catalog, you need things like um, common data formats. So, so it's actually working right the way across the brand. Um, so it'd be really neat, for instance, if you had, uh, if you could create a, and I'm back to my analogies, I'm sorry, no, but basically, great. instead of a sea of storage, you actually have a lake of data. Right, and, and so in other words, it's not so much on storage, it's about data, and data being basically backup and archiving that's in a distributed environment, so it could be in the enterprise or it could be in the cloud, but have a single point to be able to drill to. And the only way you're going to be able to do that is if you think about it from our portfolio is Networker, Avmar, Data Domain, Source One, DLM, and, and Mosey all understanding the same catalog. And so you can basically have relevancy across the whole the whole uh, shooting match. Gotcha. So not an easy thing to solve, right? But it is a journey that we want to take our customers to. Yeah, and we're going to drill down more on that with Stephen later on this yep. afternoon. So he he can help us unpack that. The other great quote that you had, I want to just make sure I understand it, is, backup is the long tail of big data. Yeah. Um, what did you mean by that? So uh, so I'm going to use Oracle as an example, bizarrely. But, <laughs> but we love Oracle examples in theCUBE. Yeah, yeah, and, 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 and what, what I find interesting about it is, is the number of years that I spent in software development, generally if you're writing software, you don't think too much about the hardware. It doesn't really matter. And, and if you think of Oracle with a database, you think, well, why would they write anything that's actually um, to do with hardware? But what we found is customers basically, because they're getting big data and they want to put all of their data in a single database for them to be able to use that value of everything in one place, the backup windows got so big that they can't actually get all the data into a single database, right? So they have to have multiple databases and then they can't search it because it's fragmented. Mm. So they came up with blockchain tracking so they could do incrementals. So the reality is you've got a software vendor who's now actually writing enhancements to their software package to, to basically optimize the hardware platform. And at that point you realize that backup's gone from being something which was, you know, just as you said, it's kind of sitting there doing its thing, it's in the infrastructure to something now which is actually, in some respects, it's the long pole. So, so to progress things like data discovery, massive pools of data, you know, big data stuff, is, is really, you look at it and say, the long pole is exactly that, which is the backup window. You know, and you need to eradicate that. And so all of the work that we're doing 
uh, enables that. And then if you take you know, uh, virtualization, you take cloud computing, you take uh, the service provision market, um, these have catalyzed the space. So it's actually, I was remarking to Stephen about it, is this is the fastest I've ever seen this market innovate. You know, we're really now running really quick because it happened in the, it happened in the software development side where the software developers basically needed more from their IT group and they went out and did it themselves and now I'm seeing it from the backup. So, so you know, we're on our heels, right? We're running fast. We've come full circle to why it's broken. That's <laughs> Guy, my final question, because we've got to uh, press on time here in the segment is, you mentioned um, backup and recovery is moving to data protection and then data management. Um, for the folks out there who are practitioners who have been in this field, and you have a lot of experience, you've seen this, this, this transformation of the industry, what, what should people be thinking about as careers are changing? We're seeing it with big data, Hadoop and other things, you know, the DBA's changing, all these different roles. So, there's shifting of, of practitioner things, but this, you know, your, your business is not going away, it's only expanding, so, but roles are changing. People are always interested in, in perspectives as data management becomes more the practice. Yeah. Um, what, what's your advice for those guys looking at the career side of their business yeah, that I, they can I, build on? Yeah, I, and, and, and what I would say is, I, 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 would, I mean, it sounds awful, but I'd say go with the flow, right? So, you know, I, I use an example of a hay bale on the stage uh, yesterday, and it was really, what you don't want to do is to get stuck in what you did well. Um, there was a quote I saw maybe uh, six months ago that said, um, you know, you don't want a career that basically you had a 20 year career where you learned something for a year and then you repeated it for 20 years. You really want to test yourself and you want to keep moving forward. So, um, in fact, at the analyst briefing we had yesterday, one of our customers turned around and said that backup's finally getting sexy. Yeah. You know, because we are involved in <laughs> analytics. And, and so the thing is, that's what I'm saying, is go with the flow, yeah. don't hold it back, and just rock and roll. Backup is sexy. Yeah. I've always said that. I mean, you know, storage <laughs> is sexy. Yeah. Um, data, data, data management is the, is what's happening, and this is what it's all about. So, you know, whatever you call, it, that's kind of the, a more of a, a prominent role. So, any particular things, uh, skill-wise, is it software? Is it one of the things that you that's on the edge that people can start looking at and start putting their toes in the water? So, you want to take all of the back-end stuff and try and make it as simple as possible. So, in other words, the adapters, you know, the way in which you plug in. Um, you know, we're going to move towards what I would see as more of a backupless backup. You definitely systems management side, the front end wise, GUIs, analytics. You know, that's going to be important. Hadoop technology is going to play pretty big into it. So there's lots of really interesting new skills to, to learn. But as I said, I think it's I think it's step out of the uncommon piece. You know, or, or what's been working all the time, and then just basically go with the flow because the companies are literally going to take us there. Guy Churchward, great to have you on theCUBE. Obviously there's a lot of demand for this, this uh, market segment. It's not shrinking, it's growing. You guys are live streaming from the booth, I hear. So there's a lot of demand for the content and, and, and what to do with their careers and how to expand on, on backup recovery, data protection, obviously data management. So thanks for coming on theCUBE. We're going to hear more from the BRS team here throughout the day. We got Jeremy Burton, a lot of the top executives. We got some customers, we got VCE coming up. This is day three, exclusive coverage from SiliconANGLE Wikibon here inside theCUBE. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.